understand how to fish this riffle from bottom to top, let's look at the life cycle of the net spinning caddis. That's what fish in this riffle are likely to be seeing and feeding on most. We'll fish imitations of the larva on the bottom, the pupa in mid depths, and the adult is a dry fly right on the surface. The net spinning caddis larva build crude retreats out of leaves and gravel. They spin a spider-like net to filter particles of food out of the current. These larvae often abandon their shelters and drift downstream in large numbers. This is known as biological drift, and it functions to disperse the insects throughout the stream. Drift usually occurs most in the mornings and evenings, which makes nymph fishing very effective at these times. I like to fish patterns like this weighted number 12 caddis larva tumbled dead drift near the bottom, just like the natural does when it gets swept off the bottom in a riffle. Choose a fly pattern based on the size, shape, and color of the predominant insect and present the fly so it moves like the natural does. Because the water here is shallow, a floating line with a nine or 10 foot leader tapered to a 4X tippet will handle this situation perfectly. I've slipped a strike indicator about three feet above the fly. Because the caddis larva is taken gently and it is fished on a slack line, the strike indicator will help me detect subtle strikes I might miss without it. An eight to nine foot rod allows you to control and mend your line easier than a short rod. And I like to use a reel with a smooth drag and large enough to hold your line plus about 50 yards of backing. If you hook a fish in a riffle, it's probably gonna head downstream. Position yourself so you work upstream through the riffle. This allows you to get closer to the fish, use shorter casts and have greater control. You want to cover the water carefully and thoroughly since fish can be spread throughout the riffle. But pay special attention to the current seams and eddies where fish are most likely to hold. Cast upstream or upstream and across with short casts of only about 15 to 30 feet. The upstream cast allows the fly to sink quickly to the bottom. When you cast, you need to strip in the slack line like this and raise your rod tip so the fly keeps drifting naturally along the bottom. Watch carefully for any hesitation of the strike indicator. Remember, these techniques will work for any Nymph, you want to fish dead drift right along the bottom, not just caddis larva. Watch that strike indicator. It just, there's one. Oh. Good, rainbow. Oh, nice fish. Yeah, get that hook out. Okay, rest him up here a bit. Let him go so somebody else can catch that fish. Let's continue the life cycle of the net spinning caddis. As the larva of the caddis enters the pupal stage, it seals itself inside its shelter, then transforms to the pupa. After four to eight weeks, the pupa is fully developed, ready to cut out of the larval case and swim to the surface where the adult will emerge. Water temperature and day length are the major factors that trigger insect hatches. But exactly how thousands of insects trapped inside pupal cases can precisely time their emergence is still a mystery to biologists. Many caddis pupa swim actively to the surface to hatch. Others use a combination of swimming and air bubbles trapped inside their skin to help float them to the surface. This is the pupa of the net spinning larva. 
It's a typical caddis pupa, and when it emerges in the fast water of a riffle, its legs, antenna, and wing cases will all trail back along its sides. Trout concentrate their feeding on the pupa at first along the bottom, and then at the surface where the pupa struggle to break through the surface film. Trout take them there with quick, sometimes splashy rises. Remember, they're not taking dry flies. It's more efficient for them to feed on the pupa. The pupal stage is brief. Normally, it takes only a few seconds for them to rise from the bottom to the top. But in those few seconds, they're extremely vulnerable to trout. This olive LaFontaine caddis pupa, in a size 14, imitates it well. The antron yarn catches tiny bubbles of air and gives the fly the silver translucence of the natural pupa as it rises to the surface. These gas bubbles are produced by the insect to help it escape the pupal shuck. Once feeding activity is noted near or at the surface, it's time to switch to a subsurface presentation. Patterns fished just beneath the surface film could be drifted passively or fished with action, depending on the behavior of the natural insect you're imitating. There are a few net spinning caddis hatching out here, and their pupa rise actively to the surface. So you want to position yourself at the top of the riffle and work down towards the rising fish. Because the pupa is fished right under the surface film, normally you'll see the strike. So you want to take your strike indicator off. My favorite way to fish the pupa is to cast down and across with a slack line. Let the fly sink a foot or so, and as your line swings below you, it'll come up to the surface just like the natural. You may have to mend your line like that to keep a belly from forming and dragging the fly across the surface. You can also lift your rod tip slowly like that to get the fly to rise towards the surface a couple times in one drift. It's most effective if you cast fairly short, 25 to 30 feet. It's about as far as you want to cast. Oh, boy, he hit that pupa as it's rising to the surface with a real thud. Woo! That's what makes this so exciting when you're fishing these pupa. They just really come up and nail it. Now, he's not as big as Henry. In fact, I think Henry could make a good meal out of this guy, but, ah, uh, brown trout. There he comes. All right. Oh, ground trout are just gorgeous. Red spots, 